Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Mimi Blitzer. I'm CEO of the American Board of Medical Genetics and Genomics. Um, and I'm going to sort of do a wrap up here of some of the basic facts about what the, board's, uh, what the board is, what it board certified means and the like. But I just want to take one second to say, how did I get into this field? So um, a long time ago, um, I, when I was an undergrad, I was a chemistry undergrad. And uh, it was, was toying with medical school and getting a PhD and the like and decided, um, yeah, I, did, I, I liked being in the lab. But somewhere around my senior year in college, I realized that I really had a, a real interest in how do I apply the lab um, information that I was hoping to learn to a clinical setting. And this was a brand new field at the time. And eventually, um, I got my PhD. Uh, in, in a program that had a PhD in human genetics and subsequently did a clinical fellowship and I'm a clinical biochemical geneticist and um, have been involved in that field for a long time and, and love every minute of it for all the reasons that everybody has said so far. Um, my career has morphed in the last uh, several years into more administration um, and the like and I love that too. Um, so you sort of have to go where your, where your interests and career goals continue to change over time. All right, so let's talk about the board. Um, and you've heard people talk about board certification either in genetic counseling or in laboratory specialties or as a clinical geneticist. So what is the board? Um, there, the board um, is an organization. Um, our mission is to serve the public, um, which is important to say, and our profession by promoting standards of excellence in our field. And uh, right now we accredit training programs for the laboratory specialties, and we credential and certify, make, making, that's, that's what it's called to go take your examinations and become certified in your, in your field and become a diplomate of the board. And we also foster lifelong learning. So after somebody becomes certified, we have programs for continuing certification. Um, to make sure that all of us keep up on our skills. So um, this board, we're the newest of the medical specialties. Um, our board was established in 1980. Um, and in 1991, um, we uh, became a member, or we were elected into what's called the American Board of Medical Specialties as the newest member board. So we're the babies on the block, even though it's been many years. Um, this is the organization where all the different medical specialties um, that have boards participate. So internal medicine, pediatrics, OBGYN, family medicine, et cetera, and medical genetics and genomics is a full member there. Um, and we work with them all the time. So the other thing that we do as, as um, geneticists and the like as we speak in alphabets, so I talk about my organization, the board, as the ABMGG. Um, there are three alphabets that some of you will be very familiar with. One is called the ACGME, and I put this up because um, this organization accredits all the residencies. If you go into uh, OBGYN, if you go into pediatrics, if you go into clinical genetics, this is the organization that residents become familiar with and programs become familiar with because they accredit those. They are going to begin over the next two years uh, to accredit our laboratory programs as well, which is very unique to this very large organization um, to be uh, accrediting programs that have PhDs and MDs in them. And then there is the ACMG. That's where you are, this meeting here. Um, this is our professional society. Um, a lot of people, um, they can be in the field for 10 or 20 or 30 years and can't figure out what ACMG and ABMGG do, but we collaborate. To be a full fellow in the, in the college, um, you need to be a diplomate of the board. But there are many other memberships, as we've talked about. OK, so we certify in these fields. You've heard of them. I'm just going to briefly mention them, but you've heard from almost everyone. We certify clinical geneticists, the MDs that um, uh, uh, manage and treat and diagnose our patients. Um, we also have a subspecialty, specialty, and those who are clinical geneticists can now do a subspecialty training um, where they manage, learn to manage and facilitate patients with inborn errors of metabolism and other metabolic dis dis disorders. Um, Julie already talked about uh, clinical biochemical genetics. 
that's my field, and laboratory genetics and genomics, which is a brand new merge specialty of cytogenetics and, and molecular genetics. The first exam for this is going to be given in 2019. Um, so the residency, as was mentioned, you have to have an MD um, in order to enter a clinical genetics residency. After one, you need one year of um, prior residency training to enter in. We have a categorical program, which is two years or 24 months of training. Um, but what's been most attractive most recently is our combined program. So we have combined training in pediatrics and medical genetics or internal medicine and medical genetics. Um, both of those are combined residencies. So instead of five years by doing them separately, it's four years as a combined. And you're board eligible in both pediatrics and, and genetics, for instance, at the end of those four years of training. The same with internal medicine. We also have had combined training with maternal fetal medicine and uh, reproductive endocrinology and infertility. Those are fellowships in OBGYN. So you would have to have completed an OBGYN residency, and then you can do combined training between maternal fetal medicine and genetics. Um, again, saving a year of training, but it's also uh, compelling and you're, you're eligible for both boards. So how many programs are there? There are 46 different residency programs that are accredited by the ACGME right now, and these are the, the subspecialties that are available. Um, and in combined training programs, currently there are 17 combined programs in peds and medical genetics. I would say in the, from, from inside scoop, we'll probably be up to 19 within the next four months. Um, and this has become a very attractive um, opportunity for medical students to enter, <clears throat> to enter into. The lab training requires a doctoral degree, um, and it's two years of training in these specialties, um, and you certainly can certify in more than one. Um, there are um, a number of laboratory programs. Um, for laboratory genetics and genomics, there are now, as of last week, 39 accredited programs, um, which is quite exciting. Um, and I'm going to skip over the fellowship. This is the medical genetic uh, biochemical fellowship if you've completed a residency. Um, how do you get board certified? Well, you got to do accredited training. Once you've done all the accredited training that's required and you have satisfactorily completed that and had a logbook which documents what kind of cases you've said, you would apply to the board and become credentialed to sit for the exam. And our exams, they're given every other year, but this is some summary data as we just gave the exam in 2017. This number here, 180 new people who were never certified before were certified. So we had 180 new diplomates. Um, and this is on our website, but you can go to see how many are certified in clinical genetics. Looks like it's been quite stable or dropping, but it actually, a lot of this has to do with our having this four-year combined PEDS training that was approved four years ago. And the numbers seem to be, we already can calculate how many people are probably taking it in 19. And there is a bump up, which is what we're expecting. So these are how many people are certified um, in, um, in the different specialties. And we hope that these continue to grow. So I'm going to end with our website, where I think for, for anybody who's in training or anybody who's considering training um, in one of these specialties to consider, this is our website, abmgg.org. Um, and there's a site here that's called training and certification. And you can go into that site and see a lot of things. What are the different training options? What's required to do this? Um, what are the learning guides? What are the things that you will learn if you go into one of these residencies or fellowships? What the, what are the, for those who are considering taking the exam, what are the content codes? We have now posted on our website what are the different breakdowns and the blueprint sort of of the exam so you know what kind of material is covered. So I think there's plenty of resources. We also have the list of all accredited programs listed by state and their contact information. Should you um, be getting your doctoral level degree and want to apply to a fellowship program? The best way to reach us is through our website. Feel free to contact us at any time. Our staff will help you out with different things. And I'm always available to take your calls. So thank you very much. Thank you.